Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for coming and I would appreciate it if you would please click that subscribe button right now as only 17% of you do. Today we are getting ready to start laying some deck boards but we're also tightening up a few things for a framing inspection. We have some things we have to do to code on every deck that we're going to be kind of finishing up today and I want to get you caught up on what we've done since last week on our build update. So let's start with that. Okay, so the first thing that we did was I think when we left you last, we had cut all the ends of our joists off to length to where we wanted the deck to end, but we didn't put up our outside rim joist. So our outside rim joist is installed. Uh, and then it's also been G-taped because the way that we run our fascia boards, we have a deck board on top and then our fascia board goes to there and water can get in between there and leak. So we always protect our rim joists so that uh, any moisture that gets in between there doesn't sit there and get trapped and decay the wood. So that's been installed. And then we also have our waterproof bladder. 50% of this deck has a waterproof bladder on it. If you wanna learn how to do that, you can check out our masterclass, links below in the description, and you can learn how, everything you need to know about how to install a waterproof bladder. So that's completely installed. We also have all of our decking. We just unloaded it off the truck today, so it's up on top of the deck, ready to go. And then there's some special brackets that we've been installing. So you wanna come take a look at those? So this is a bracket made by Simpson Strong Tie, and it is decorative, but it's also uh, functional as far as structure goes. So we're putting these on and this, this is a positive connection from your post to beam connection, okay? So not only does that satisfy code for your post to beam connection, but everywhere there's a seam in the beam, you can see up there, it also ties that together so it keeps this from wanting to pull away like this, okay? We're a little short on bolts today, so some of them aren't fully installed yet. But that's all right, we'll, uh, they're on order and they'll be in and once they are, then we'll get them all installed. So those are going on. We're also going to be installing some positive connections from our beam to joist connection. So basically this little piece of steel here will screw into the beam and into the joist and we're gonna do every single one all the way down to keep, that satisfies the code for keeping the joist locked down to the beam, okay? So this is just a little bit more decorative way to do it than a standard uh, twist, uh, like an H 2.5 or something like that. So we're gonna do that as well. And we'll probably do both sides to satisfy the coat. All right, so that'll be coming up. What else? Oh, we did our V bracing. So V bracing, what it does, and we have a video about V bracing out on our channel. So go check that out. But V-bracing is one way to make the deck rock solid to keep it from swaying back and forth. Just when you're walking on it, if you don't have V-bracing on your deck and it's a long span like this one, 62 feet, it can roll back and forth pretty easily. So we try not to do that by adding the V-bracing. You have to use two four inch construction legs. I'm using a Fasten Master Timberlock to lock those all together. And that really keeps this deck from moving around. We don't even have any decking installed and this deck doesn't move, it doesn't bounce, it doesn't sway. And it was, you could tell when one guy would get up on the deck and walk around, that thing was moving back and forth a little bit. So uh, really a good way to do it. You can also put in knee braces on each side of each post. I personally don't like that look. Um, I'd rather do something like the bracket that we've done and just give it a little bit of an enhanced look without all that extra uh, v or Y bracing that goes on each side of a post and uh, I'm just not crazy about how it looks. On certain houses it looks pretty good on a ranch style or something but it's not my style so I don't like to, I can av I avoid those like the plague as much as possible and then if mandatory I'll install them uh, but usually I get my engineer to get around it somehow so I don't have to. I don't know if you look inside here you can kind of see the bladder, the baffles, the bladder's completely done and ready for decking. So that's all been, again, waterproofed. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit when we go upstairs and start showing you the deck boards and all that. But I think that's about where we're at so far. That's the progress we made uh, since the last time you saw our video. All right, guys, so uh, it looks like we're not doing anything right now, but we're actually doing something really important. I call it facing screws. So 
when you're when you're a professional deck builder and we do a lot of stainless steel face screwing cortex with when you're doing a waterproof bladder you can't really use a clip on it it's not really warranted for working that way so we like to face screw and cortex plug that type of installation and we're just screwing by hand we find it almost as quick as using a gun and there's not really a gun out there that uh, does a cortex screw that's stainless steel because we like to use stainless steel screws in our installation. So what we like to do is preload all of our screws in the same direction. That way, when I'm in the middle of building a deck, I don't have to do this every time I need a new set of screws. Because what you're gonna do, trying to, trying to run screws like this is silly. But if you can grab a handful of screws, you and these are sharp. You put them in your pocket, they're gonna poke you. It doesn't feel really good. So you can actually put these, so you can make them so that they don't poke you and also that they're all facing the same direction. It takes a minute. I've heard of there's some mechanical ways to do this, but until I figure that out, if one of you guys out there has a device for me, hit me up, leave me a DM. We're gonna just sit here for 20 minutes and face screws. I've had the comment that is the biggest waste of time I've ever seen. And I've also had the comment that that is brilliant. So it doesn't really matter to me if you love it or hate it. This channel is about teaching people what they don't know. Maybe there's a new beginner that goes, wow, man, that is the most important piece of information I learned today. Well, well a professional might be like, duh, you know, it all depends on your, your level of experience. And if I can throw out a quick tip or something like that, we're not gonna stop doing this if you don't like it. We're gonna keep doing it. You know, maybe you should try it or embrace it and see what you guys think. Maybe it is a waste of time. I've actually had a full bucket of face screws fall and go all over the place. And that was like an hour of wasted effort. And you know, that, that hurts a little bit. Look at that. Now, now I can grab those. And if I'm gonna put them in my pocket, I put them in like this, so they don't poke me in the side of my leg all day long, okay? Yeah, you can also wear bags. When I'm laying decking, I like to be nimble, so I don't I don't gear up a whole lot. I'm minimal, and I'm not, uh, it's, rain, it's been on and off rain today, so I didn't wear any block lotter stuff, I'm just in some sweats. But anyways, then, then I can just grab these and move them around, and then I can finger them one at a time as I'm installing. It's just something that you learn to do as you, you know, and you're just running screws and you just kind of get used to it. You just have a system. Well, that's part of my system. So I hope that helps somebody out. If it did, leave a comment. And if it did and you're not subscribing, shame on you. What I've done is I've, since we have a waterproof bladder and we can't see very well what we're doing, what we're attaching to, especially on these flat blocks where we're having a double border, I identified the center of my screw pattern with a silver Sharpie. That way I can see between the deck boards, we're gonna snap a chalk line to screw off all our boards, but I can see it. And then that way I won't, so that way I won't end up misaligning with my, where my screws need to go.
right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you learned a little something today about how to build a deck or maybe how to install some deck boards, don't forget to click that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Leave a comment below if you're so inclined and don't forget to like this video. But of those four commands, the one I want you to do the most is click that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming to our channel. Hope you come back and watch some more. Have a great day.